Hello, everyone, and welcome to One Civil Law, where we learn through the misfortunes of others. As always, I hope you enjoy this legal education content, and today may be the day I earn that subscription. In today's video, we're going to talk about a shocking report from the State Bar of California, pinned in the description below, that details past unethical conduct in handling complaints against one of its most prominent members, Thomas Girardi. You may remember Girardi as the lawyer who represented Erin Brockovich in her famous lawsuit against PG&E, or perhaps as the husband of Real Housewife of Beverly Hills star Erica Jane. But you may also remember him as a lawyer who is now facing multiple lawsuits, criminal investigations, and bankruptcy proceedings for allegedly embezzling millions of dollars from his clients, including widows and orphans of plane crash victims. Now, you might think that such a high-profile lawyer would have been under close scrutiny by the state bar for any signs of misconduct or malpractice. But, according to the recent report, which was just released, commissioned by an independent review panel after public outcry about Girardi's case, this was not the situation at all. In fact, the report reveals that the state bar mishandled at least nine complaints against Girardi over a period of 40 years, allowing him to escape discipline and continue his fraudulent schemes against his own clients. The report is a damning indictment of the state's bar culture, policies, and procedures that enabled Girardi's misconduct to go unchecked for so long. It exposes how the state bar failed to follow its own rules and regulations, how it ignored red flags and evidence of wrongdoing, how it gave preferential treatment to Girardi based on status and connections, how it lacked transparency and accountability to the public, and how it resisted reform and oversight. The report also makes several recommendations for improving the state bar's performance and restoring public trust in its ability to regulate lawyers. These recommendations include creating an independent oversight board, strengthening whistleblower protections, and enhancing complaint intake and investigation processes, increasing sanctions for serious misconduct cases like Girardi, and implementing a risk-based approach to prioritize complaints based on potential harm. But Will these recommendations be enough to fix what's clearly a broken system in California? And will they be implemented at all? Or will they be met with resistance from within the state bar of California itself? And what about Girardi? Will he ever face justice for his crimes? Or will he continue to get away with it like he has for so long? These are some of the questions we will explore in this video as we dive into this fascinating story of corruption, incompetence, and betrayal in one of America's largest legal organizations. So stay tuned as we break down this report and what it means for Girardi's case and for California lawyers in general. Before we get into the details of the report, let me give you some background on Girardi. Girardi is a lawyer who founded Girardi and Keys, one of the most successful and influential law firms in California. He made his name and fortune by taking on big corporations and winning huge settlements for his clients, many of whom were victims of environmental disasters, medical malpractice, or personal injury. He was also known for a lavish lifestyle, philanthropy, and celebrity connections. He married Erica Jane in 2000, who is a singer and reality TV star on the show Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. But behind this glamorous facade, Girardi was allegedly running a massive Ponzi scheme that involved stealing money from his clients' trust accounts to fund his own expenses and debt. He also allegedly lied to courts, judges, and other lawyers about the status of cases and settlements. He's been accused of forging signatures, falsifying documents, and creating shell companies to hide his assets. His scheme began to unravel in 2020 when he was sued by several former clients who claimed they never received settlement money from him. One of his lawsuits was filed by a group of Indonesian villagers who were victims of a plane crash that Girardi helped represent them in. They alleged that Girardi had received $2 million from Boeing as part of a settlement agreement, but never paid them the share of the money received from Boeing. Another lawsuit was filed by Edelson PC, a law firm that had a partner with Girardi on a class action lawsuit regarding the 2017 wildfires in California. They alleged that Girardi had received $12 million as part of that settlement agreement, but never distributed any money to the plaintiffs or paid Edelson its share of the fees. These lawsuits triggered a series of events that led to Girardi's downfall. His wife filed for divorce in 2020, 
allegedly to protect assets from creditors. His law firm filed for bankruptcy after being unable to pay its employees or rent. His license to practice law was suspended in 2021 after he failed to respond to the state's bar's inquiry about misconduct allegation. And he's currently facing criminal investigations by the FBI and U.S. Attorney's Office for fraud and embezzlement. But how did he get away with it for so long? And why the state bar failed to stop him? That's where the report that was just released comes in. The report was released in 2023 by a three-member independent review panel that was appointed by the state bar's board of trustees in 2021. The panel consists of a former federal judge, a former state attorney general, and former state auditor. They reviewed over 40,000 pages of documents and interviewed 60 witnesses to examine how the state bar handled complaints against Girardi from 1980s until 2020. The report found that the state bar mishandled at least nine complaints against Girardi during this period. Some of these complaints were dismissed without proper investigation or documentation. Some were closed prematurely or without adequate follow-up. Some were influenced by external pressure or interference, sometimes from Girardi himself, sometimes from allies. And some were subject to improper delays or inaction by the state bar or its officials. For example, in 2006, a complaint was filed against Girardi by an attorney who alleged that Girardi had forged his signature on a settlement agreement and failed to pay him his fees. The complaint was assigned to an investigator who did find evidence of forgery and recommended disciplinary action against Girardi. However, the investigator's supervisor overruled him and closed the complaint without any action. The supervisor later admitted that he was afraid of Girardi's power and reputation and that he wanted to avoid a confrontation with him. Another example is 2015, when a complaint was filed against Girardi by a former client who alleged that Girardi had misappropriated her settlement money from a medical malpractice case. The complaint was assigned to an investigator who contacted Girardi for a response. However, instead of responding to the investigator, Girardi contacted the chief trial counsel of the state bar, who was his friend and a former colleague. The chief trial counsel then instructed the investigator to close the complaint without taking any action. The investigator later testified he felt pressured and intimidated by the chief trial counsel's involvement. The report concluded the state's bar failure to discipline Girardi was due to several systemic factors that was affected by its culture, policies, and procedures. These factors included a lack of independence from political influence, a lack of transparency and accountability, lack of resources, training, and leadership, the report also makes several recommendations for improving these areas and restoring the public trust in the state's bar ability to regulate lawyers. These recommendations include creating a more independent oversight board, strengthening whistleblower protection, enhancing complaint intake and investigating procedures, increasing sanctions for serious misconduct cases like Girardi's, and implementing a risk-based approach to prioritize complaints based on their potential harm. The report stated that these recommendations were not only necessary, but urgent. Given the gravity and magnitude of Girardi's case and impact on public confidence in lawyers. So what do I think about the report? Well, I think it's a scathing expose of how one lawyer managed to game the system for decades with impunity while harming countless clients who trusted them with their lives, as well as damaging the legal profession as a whole. I think it's a shocking revelation about how one legal organization failed miserably in its duty to protect clients and uphold ethical standards that apply to all lawyers. And I think it's a wake-up call for accountability and reform for both lawyers and regulators. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did making it. If you did, please remember to give it a like, share it with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, remember, if you're going to do something wrong, don't do it in front of me, or I might see you next time. Cheers, my friends, and goodbye.